Hey guys, welcome back to Car Audio Fabrication. Mark here. In a previous video, I showed you guys the entire build process for making this custom down firing subwoofer enclosure that's going to go under the seat in an F-150. It has two down firing 10 inch subwoofers. It has the rounded corners that you can see here. And then I of course had to do a special angle cut to the top in order to get this to match the angle of the seat. So if you guys want to see that build process, definitely be sure to go back and watch that video. Now you'll notice that in the center here, I've made these shapes and this truck is actually going to SEMA. So in the center here, we're going to have some of the different sponsors of the audio section of the build along with the main company logo. So check it out my friends. This is the official logo here. This is for the Black Rifle Coffee Company at SEMA and the audio is by Rockford Fosgate. Sounds Plus did the full install and then obviously I'm building the subwoofer enclosure. So I had this made on a laser. If you don't have a laser, don't forget that you can look up sign manufacturing companies in your area. There's a lot of different companies that do this kind of thing. If you give them the logos and give them a shape that you need, they can make this kind of thing for you. Now our goal for this video though is that we need to somehow load this from the rear into this insert piece and we need to edge light it with some LED strips. Let's first focus on the modifications that I need to make to these pieces. This is two separate rings. This outer ring, I actually wanna add a chamfer and just have it completely meet up with this surface of the enclosure because I'm gonna permanently attach it to the enclosure and then this other piece will slide in. To maximize the cut of the chamfer on my router, I'm going to need to copy this to a piece of quarter inch wood first. If you don't understand why I copied that piece to a quarter inch piece, you can really see why here, if I look at the side of the chamfer bit, you can see how that bearing is gonna ride on the quarter inch piece and I can maximize that cut. And once we're done, we get this. It's still stuck to this quarter inch piece of wood. Let me detach it. Now that it's detached, you can see I have that really nice sharp corner. And once I permanently attach this to the box, it's gonna perfectly flow when I wrap it with carpet. So that is all that we need to do for now to the outer piece. What do we need to do to the inner piece now to get our acrylic to fit in? If this is the back side that we're looking in, we want our acrylic to of course load in from the back. So I need to make some sort of notch on the inside here for some clearance. And I don't wanna only make it enough clearance for the acrylic, I also want to make it enough clearance for my LED strand to fit between the acrylic and the edge of the wood. If I set this on here centered and make a couple of marks right here and right here, I measured these marks and I can see that that is about a half inch of clearance that I need for the acrylic. And then if I measure my LED lights, it's about another 16th of an inch. So a half inch plus a 16th is nine sixteenths that I need to cut in. To do this, I'm going to use this three quarter inch rabbiting bit, but instead of cutting three quarters of an inch, I'm gonna swap out this bearing right here for a rabbit of nine sixteenths. Now I'm glad I caught myself just now because I almost made a potential mistake. Something that you wanna make sure when you're doing something like this is if you're adding a chamfer around the inside or a round over using a bit like that, you wanna make sure that you add the chamfer or round over the shaping profile first. This is a little bit more advanced router discussion, so hang with me for a second here. But the reason for this is the riding edge of the bearing tends to be a little bit, if we zoom in here, you can see that there's a gap between the top of the cutting flute and where that bearing is. That means if I were to use the rabbiting bit first, I would have to save myself a little bit of material in order to actually make this contact. But I don't wanna do that because then you would see that slight little edge when you go to wrap this with upholstery materials. So instead, I'm gonna carefully do the chamfer first with the right height out of the table because this bearing is much more close to the edge of the cutting flute. That way, when I come in to do my secondary cut with this, this has no problem riding against that edge that I just created with the chamfer. I hope that made sense. Let me know down below if it did make sense or if it didn't, maybe I can help explain it in a different way. There's my chamfer cut there. So now you can really see, I can fully maximize the cut of the rabbiting bit 
into this because this bearing has no problem riding against that sloped edge. And don't forget, I've swapped out the bearing so it's 9 16 from the edge of the cutting flute to the bearing, which is gonna cut into the material that distance. This is a large bit and this piece is getting kind of thin, so it's kind of sketchy to router. So I'm gonna put some template tape on and then use this router shield just to make sure that I'm good and safe. So now we have this nice step on the back side of the panel. If we take our acrylic piece, I'm actually gonna have two of them. One is going to be the one that's lasered and then the other one I'm gonna have some wrap film on it. Those will load in there. And you can see I have a nice clearance for when I put this LED light in to allow it to be there. I want to show you guys how I put that LED light strip in and what it looks like when it's finished, but I need to get it wired, I need to get it upholstered. Speaking of wiring, really quick, I wanna say a thank you to our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. When it comes to car audio wiring and connection accessories, my go-to source is New Concepts. Their power wire comes in a wide variety of different sizes and colors to match any application. For RCA signal wires, they have all sorts of different options based on your budget, how many channels you need, and the length of the wire. They also have a full lineup of different battery terminals, fuse blocks, and distribution blocks. Definitely consider them for your next system and you can check them out at newconcepts.com or at the link down in the video description. So this is the back side of my beauty panel and I've now done the upholstery. If you wanna catch the upholstery process, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for the next video. So be sure that you are subscribed. I now need to add these LED lights around this outside perimeter. This is simple enough because of that rabbited edge I added earlier. I'm just gonna peel this adhesive backing paper away and apply them. With the lights attached, I can do a test fit, and you can see that I drilled this hole here that goes into the underside of the enclosure, so it's not actually into the airspace of the box for the subwoofer, it's just underneath. That wire goes through, so that will be my connection point, and we are good to go. All right, my friends, are you ready for the moment of truth? Drum roll, please. Boom! Looking good. Now you probably noticed that the box is already upholstered. In the next video, I'll be showing you a really cool trick for wrapping a complex shaped enclosure like this with a planned seam. And I'm going to show you the rest of this truck. So be sure to subscribe so that you can catch that video. Next time you are in need of wire and wire distribution accessories for a build, be sure to check out my monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. And a special thanks to Ali, William, Marcos, Michael, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you, my friend, for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.